Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Earlier, I posted uh, an animation of the tutorial, and I said that although that animation was just a basic setup of animation nodes, it could not be done with geometry nodes, and I didn't think it could be done anytime soon. So later people replied to me with some thoughts, and I learned a very important technique that opens up a lot more possibility than I thought earlier. After that, I posted a demonstration about the polygon rotation. However, that was just a piece, small piece of what I have discovered. There were many other setup or demonstrations that I haven't posted, so that, such as instancing on um, faces or polygons, random color on each polygon, polygon disappearance, and etc. Today's topic is to discuss the basic technique and we may combine all this technique the other time to make a wonderful animation as similar as the one that you can accomplish in animation nodes. So let's start. So here we're in Blender, the version is 2.93 beta. And on the left upper corners, here are the topic list that we will cover today. The rotation will be discussed the other time because even, in, even today, in 3.0, we still do not have the attribute vector rotate nodes, which will make things very difficult for rotations. So you need uh, more kind of uh, group nodes, a uh, preset to function, which I haven't really prepared for you yet. So I would cover the more kind of basic ideas before we head into more advanced topics. So long story short, um, Briefly talking about the attribute, attribute is basically a list of values. And it, most of the time, this list length, because when you have a list, you must consider the length. Um, because otherwise I can have 100 values within this list, thousands of values within this list. So what's defined length is most of the time is based on these vertices. Because if you're trying to use the point instance, you always encounter problem of this point scale, point rotate. Everything is based on the vertices. Okay, but the, the vertices is not the only way that you're working with the attributes. There is also face value, for example, the normal or other things. Briefly talking about the normals, the normal is a vector from the world origin that always originated from the world origin. Looking at the direction that this polygon is facing to, so now we have this polygons that are facing upwards. That's why this normal is 0, 0, 1. It's facing upwards. This is the point Z, positive Z axis, okay? Which also means you, it, this normal cannot be used as a polygon center. So this is a mistake that people usually think. However, uh, so in this case, we can see there is no position or there is no attribute which is called a polygon center. But there is a way for us to actually get the polygon center attribute. And this is the technique that we're going to discuss today. So firstly, let's just uh, remove these on this kind of spread sheet. And uh, we're going to subdivide this plane so that we have more polygon to work with. So if we subdivide one times, basically we have four polygons here being uh, created. So we can go to the wireframe view and this is how it looks, okay? Once we have done that, and this is a technique that we're going to use, we're going to use the attribute convert. And take the attribute positions. If we directly write the polygon center, this attribute name is very long, so I'll just shorten that as PC. Just to know that it's the polygon center, you can also name whatever you want, but to know how it has been functioned. So if we directly convert it, it will just create a PC with the in the vertex domain because if you change it to auto it's actually just a means point most of the time so we're going to switch that to face another thing is we're going to change from float to vector okay so here's several things we find is the pc does not appear within the vertices but also uh, also it appears in the face as a vector so it's a location number and this number is actually the polygon center this is the polygon center that we are having here, just uh, to get you know, if we try to use the attribute mix, and we have position, and we have polygon center, type in PC, and we 
overwrite the position. Then if the mix is 100%, all these kind of points goes through the point uh, polygon center that we marked out earlier. Because it's all these vertices just merge to polygon centers. This step is very important because next step I'm going to do a magic for you. This magic is called a node which is called edge split and it presents within the geometry nodes. So it's one of uh, the very first modifier that it presents within geometry nodes. So at this moment, this node is basically to separate the polygons uh, from the objects. So it's usually like uh, in edit mode, you hit the control P, you hit the selection, you had it separated by selection and so on and so forth. But it's uh, separate based on the angle. So in this case, 30 angle is not separating everything so within the polygons. So type in zero, it separates everything. But at the same time, we have everything disappeared. Why? And this is when the magic occurs. If we decrease this fa factor, and you can see what actually happens. All these kind of, once you have polygon separated, so this originally is one point, but it has been separated into two points so that each polygon has a vertices to play with, okay? And when you mix all this kind of position into the polygon center, this this vertices goes to polygon center, this vertices goes to polygon center. It's basically a polygon disappearance where you make them disappear. So this is the magic. If we go to the solid view, you can see. And this def definitely appear, uh, apply to many other mesh as well, okay? So this is just one part of this entire whole technique. So even if we do not see the polygons, we, this, we still have points or vertices being there. It's just uh, too small that we do not see, okay? But it also means that if I create a cube, just to make it infinitely small, and uh, we're trying to use the point instance and select our cubes. And you can see this cube has been instanced on each polygon center. We have four polygons, so we have four cubes. Wonderful. Actually, it's very amazing. So every people is asking for the instancing on the polygons, and this is how we deal, deal with that. So we can actually test with Suzanne monkeys, and we can try to select our planes and uh, say it's copy modifier. So we have these Suzanne monkeys being generated. I'm going to disable this uh, subdivide because the polygon is too much. And within, uh, with, after the point instance, I'm going to use the joint geometry so that we put the original Suzanne monkeys to the place. And you can see how this monkey is having all this kind of face instance of cubes. So the cubes is no longer instance on this kind of polygons, but on these vertices. This is very, very cool. But uh, here's one thing I want, I want you to actually realize is we still have multiple vertices. It's just uh, they merge to a center, which means if you try to decrease this factor, you can actually see, it's, you, see, you, see you think it's a single cube, but it's actually four cubes. So this is not a really ideal solution, but it does give you the results. So if you do not want this issue to happen, uh, it's possible that you add a wield modifier. It does, it does cause many other issues, however. But this is, this is not something that I would like to discuss. This is just a one way that you can think about this issue. I'm not saying this must be the ultimate solution, but this can be a solution. This is not yet the end of the entire story. So whatever we are trying to say right now is basically talking about the vector, a basically location. We're talking about the position, a polygon center, which is also a, loca a, loca a location, but everything finally can be turned into many other things. For example, vertex color. If I'm adding a vertex color, and let's add a attribute sample texture. So let's add a texture, and uh, usually if you're mapping either the UV or positions, and you map that into code, so you map it into a color. So let's go to, in the solid view, so if you put the shadings, studio, let's change everything to vertex color. Everything turns black because we didn't define that, we didn't brush any vertex color yet. 
uh, let's go to the texture and let's add a clouds it's just a grayish but let's change that to color and we have this entire colorful Suzanne image the reason is that a single vertex is sharing a color and that vertex is another color that vertex is another color that vertex is another color everything is vertex color is based on the vertices of course it's just what its name said however what's wonderful wonderful here is basically when we are trying to use this polygon center technique all these kind of points is essentially sharing a uh, so all these kind of point has been merged to share a single attribute so basically there is a single attribute here and it goes to here it goes to there it goes to there and there finally cover a entire polygon so long story short just to tell you the effect if i track the pc which is polygon center this is no, no longer relevant so you just disable that and you can see we have per polygon color of our suzanne monkey okay so no matter how you increase or scale you just have each polygon is inherited a single color so you can even increase that larger so if this size is not you may type more so 15 so finally it becomes more uniform colorful color of our suzanne monkey okay here's one thing i want to remind you as we discussed earlier about all this kind of edge split polygon separation if you try to shade this and we see this not work because these polygons essentially are separate to each other in this case the ultimate solution finally goes back to the wheel the modifier so once you take a wheel the modifier and then you can actually shade it smooth otherwise no there's uh, one last uh, point that i would like to discuss which is actually the polygon push so previously we were talking about the polygon center and the center whatever stuff but uh, knowing that there's one attribute which is we don't need to create or convert it's already there for all our faces which is normal so here let's take an attribute factor mass so let's take a position and uh, we can add that to normal and we can finally get to position so all this kind of point uh, has been exploded but we do not really have control of this kind of normals so let's take an attribute mass actually attribute vector mass and uh, this time we're going to change the type into scale so we're scale the normal so let's take the normal and normal a very tricky part of it is that the normal is being set and it cannot be changed regardless so if i try to scale the normal it does not work so we have to use a sub uh, scapegoat so let's just call it the n so in this case by changing this n which actually means normal so we are actually changing the explosion it's kind of sort of kind of stuff okay so this is one expect of that all these kind of polygons uh, once they have been separated with this edge split if you do not have this edge split it just expand like a solidify modifier but it's not really solidify modifier okay so now you actually explode this mesh uh, all, basically what happens is all these kind of so it's just still the same that all these kind of four vertices are sharing the same attribute which is called a normal and if you increase this normal it just uh, goes towards the normal direction basically the location the direction where this polygon is faced that's why it looks like this kind of explosion okay but this is not really interesting because it just uh, explodes to infinity what makes things interesting is when you mix all this kind of attribute mix so it disappear so but there is an easy way that you can actually deal with these things so let's just uh, try to let's take take a PC take a PC and it's let's just take the normal to one so if we change this a single mix so now it does not only explode but it also disappear So this is how things make it interesting one thing i want to really remind you is this mix factor can also be an attribute so that you can treat each polygon differently okay based on whatever other stuff for example you can a common method that we try to use 
uh, is use the distance to make a spherical fall. But all this kind of thing has to be done manually because it's not like animation or which directly provides you all this kind of fall function to do the stuff. You have to do manually with all this kind of mass. And it's kind of being covered in other tutorials. So I don't wish to discuss this in part. I don't wish to discuss them in this particular case. I think this tutorial should just end here. And I think it's really kind of interesting just to look at how Susan actually exploded. Um, basically, this technique is mind blowing. There's many other possibilities. As I've shown, there's also polygon rotations being available along with probably many other things that you can think about. So I will really just finish here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.